What if I told you that vegetables were actually bad for you and green juices are even worse? Which goes against what most of us have been told our whole lives. Eat your fruits and veggies. Vegetables are good for you. You're going to grow big and strong. Eat spinach to get forms like pop. It's, it's a whole bunch of nonsense. You know, look, look at this girl with this smile on her face, slogging down that green juice, thinking how healthy she is. How irritated would people be if they were suddenly told that green juices and vegetables were actually bad and that disgusting food they've been choking down their whole lives, not enjoying it all, that they thought was for their health, was actually not. I mean, I think people should be up in arms. I think people should be outraged. And the focus today is green juices because they're basically concentrated, highly available liquid forms of vegetables. Big difference between raw kale smoothies and some broccoli sautéed with butter. Huge, huge difference. So people love to bring up anti-nutrients, but the main two things they miss are, one, it's not as relevant in a high caloric setting, and two, flavonoids and nutrient imbalances and also things like chlorine and fluoride in the vegetables are probably much worse but the reason we're bringing the anti-nutrients up today are that when you concentrate these smoothies you're actually getting enough of them where they are an issue so when you're having beans oats grains any sort of high caloric starch that's what humans have been eating in their diets their whole lives throughout all of history grains are a natural human staple and if there's a small amount of anti-nutrients in the grain but you're getting the bulk of your calories from it, at least it serves a purpose. With the vegetables, which are very high volume, mostly water, you know, high water content, you're not really getting calories from vegetables. So from a natural perspective of what we would need for survival and harvesting and that type of stuff, vegetables really wouldn't be in our diet unless it was just for enjoyment or, you know, we had extra time to gather them. So grain's good vegetables bad at least the grain serve a purpose and when we look at glucosinolates glucosinolates it's mainly disrupting the thyroid function i remember being told a story about this girl who was drinking kale smoothies and she went to the doctor because her thyroid was like basically shut down and she told the doctor that she was doing those smoothies and he figured out you know hey you need to stop doing these and lo and behold magically her thyroid suddenly got better when she removed the vegetable so you remove the vegetables from the diet, feel better. Hey, I guess big broccoli isn't making as much money. If you guys want the full scientific explanation and to go in depth, it, it, look, it's not really that important because you shouldn't be eating this stuff for health benefits. And if you're eating it just once or twice a week for enjoyment, that's perfectly fine. Phytates, phytic acid really shouldn't be a concern because if you're going to try to say that, oh, they're binding to minerals and absorbing minerals from other foods, in the context of a normal balanced diet, it's not as big of a deal and you could always take mineral supplements. The problem is if you're drinking green juices in such high volumes, you know, kind of regardless of the supplements you take, you're still going to have a lot of negatives of the super high anti-nutrient content of the vegetables. Then you have oxalates, which mainly cause kidney stones. Oxalic acid in the form of calcium oxalate gets stored in the kidneys and all throughout the rest of the body. So, you know, if you're eating a lot of spinach, putting a lot of spinach in your green smoothies and other certain vegetables that are high in oxalates, then you could have some issues. And keep in mind, there's also like berries and other foods that are also very high in oxalates, like celery. Is celery high? I know beetroot is. Um, there's a few that are very, very high, like rhubarb is very high in oxalates. So you got to be super careful uh, with your oxalate intake if you're eating large amounts of certain vegetables. And another significant thing to note is that when grains are prepared, the anti-nutrient content is significantly reduced because they're fermented, they're salted, they're cooked, they're soaked. Green raw vegetables in a smoothie is peak anti-nutrient content. So, you know, the other things to be concerned about, what type of water was the vegetables grown in? Are they retaining fluoride and chlorine in the vegetables, other chemicals and bad things? Because they really do suck up a lot of the water content from the soil. Plus, were they sprayed with herbicides and pesticides, even the organic stuff under some circumstances? Not only are there anti-nutrients in the vegetables, the actual availability of the minerals and the vitamins isn't that high. The body can't really absorb them. You know, with the exception of sometimes like vitamin A, beta carotene, the flavonoids, uh, that the body can convert to vitamin A if there is fat in the meal. 
So if all you're doing is sucking vitamin A out of these vegetables, you're going to have fat soluble vitamin imbalances. And you're not going to have enough D3. You're not going to have enough K2. You're going to start having all sorts of health issues. So keep in mind when something is really high volume, really high water content, one of the only real vitamins that the body can suck out of it is vitamin A. So you got to be careful with imbalances in that regards, which isn't really the problem with grains and beans in a lot of cases because their carotene or flavonoid or vitamin A content is not that high. Now, this is actually why I'm making this video today. I have seen one too many athletic green sponsorships, so they are obviously killing it. And this is not identical to green juice. It's basically green juice with uh, synthetic powder supplements and probiotics and some other extracts added to it. But when people are taking, you know, three, four tablespoons of this green powder and slogging it down in the morning thinking they're healthy, they're destroying their health. You know, no exaggeration. Is this worse or better than just drinking straight green juice? I honestly couldn't tell you. I think it depends on how much you're drinking and they're both horrible. So it's obviously being marketed as a super health food. It's good for you. And it's not. It's not. Uh, so we'll break this down when we look at the ingredients. But it's just way too much guys it's just way too much you know look she's got the the green juice in her hand dark green high chlorophyll oh it does not promote gut health it if anything would suppress your immune system with an overload of vitamins boost your energy more like an immune inflammatory reaction that's exciting your adrenals helps recovery yeah okay if you don't want to sleep and they, you know, they got look, go, do, 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 just all buzzwords, marketing stuff that people think is healthy, but is not actually healthy. You know, you have to dig really hard to find out. Like very famous, high-level celebrities and athletes, they're marketing for this. And then when we look at the supplement facts, it's just ridiculous. The amount of vitamins and ingredients they added to this. Oh, if greens are so healthy, why do you have probably a hundred different things in, whether they're synthetic extracts or stuff that are bad for you? And there's not necessarily something wrong with the synthetic extract or vitamin. That's how most of them are made. But What's the chelation? You know, is it magnesium citrate, which gives you diarrhea, or magnesium glycinate, which is actually highly available? What's the amount? Is it balanced? And if you just go down this list, 917% B12 DV and 467%. Look, like, how are you going to give yourself 1,100%, 1,100% biotin and then 9% calcium, 10% phosphorus, 2%, like, I mean, 2% sodium isn't that important, but you know, you got things like 17% manganese, but 80% pantothenic acid. Like, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The vitamin B complex we have on organ supplements, all of the supplements on organ supplements, what makes them special is they are dosed to be what naturally occurs in food, whether that correlates with the daily value or not. And RB complex is basically like eating a steak. It's the pure B vitamin ratios concentrated from a steak, not this mishmash. Hey, yeah, we could go down the list of what you should and shouldn't be taking. You know, what's the bioavailability? Is this actually doing something? At the end of the day, you should not be taking this supplement, and there's no reason to go super in depth on the chelations and the amounts and the volumes. It's just completely wrong. And then you have all of this stuff. You know, whether you're going to argue, okay, this ingredient has a high anti-nutrient content. This one is too high in flavonoids. It's when you have a hundred things in it, it's just, it's just insane. And then you have even more extracts and stuff that are probably high tan and very accurate and even worse for your liver. Mushroom complex, dude, you got two to three tablespoons of powder here and you have hundred ingredients. So if you section the powder to each of those 100 ingredients, you're getting what, like a, f a few grams of each ingredient? How is that effective, that volume of stuff for your body? You know, the probiotics are probably dead and not significant amounts at all. All right, I think I've talked enough trash about green juices, guys. Uh, so what you actually want to do is have a very high quality probiotic in the morning if you can like water kefir, dairy kefir, yogurt with some carbs like honey in it. That would be an excellent, excellent start to your day. The dairy is very high in B vitamins, which our bodies need a lot of cholesterol, saturated fat, very healthy for overall cell infrastructure. And of course, the probiotic content of dairy kefir, water kefir, and uh, milk kefir, kefir, however you want to say it, is the most effective probiotic and will make most people feel good and fix their guts. So that's what you should be doing in the morning. You could also check out my day of eating videos where I have 
usually carb, starch, and fiber-based breakfasts. You know, we're all supplements on vitamin C or B-complex with them. Those are also two very healthy breakfasts because you're either giving your body probiotics and nutrients or you're giving your body starch and stuff you need to detox the liver. So definitely check out frank guys. We have all the businesses on there. We mentioned organ supplements a few times as well as uh, the water kefir and stuff, which we should have on Frankie's Range Foods back soon. As always, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.